so welcome That's to the name. Philly Escape Pod episode 22. This weekend, I learned there was a lot of wins thrown around, a lot of wins for Brits over there because oh God. Jonathan Taylor <laughs> is the man, uh, JT, not Timberlake, Taylor. I mean, he dropped um, 52 points on your forehead. How do you feel? Um, <laughs> I feel like it was the perfect revenge against my Camara 6, six TD, 60 burger from last year. I, I had history in my hands. You have it in your hands for this weekend. It's fine. It's fine. I'll let it happen. Uh, number two, I suck at Fortnite. Okay? You guys made me hear it <laughs> plenty. Thank you. Thank I th you. I think I barely I watched you because I was falling asleep. Keep in mind, I had a few. I had a few. Those picklebacks uh, kept, kept getting sent my way. Um, unfortunate. You played and, Fortnite before the picklebacks, I, I thought. <laughs> no, 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 no. The picklebacks played me before I played the Fortnite. Um, and number three of this weekend, this bird gang is vibing, boys. 40 to 29 victory over the Saints. I thought it was actually 40 22 because I had stopped watching because it was kind of like, all right, we got this in the I bag. had a garbage time touchdown. Um, garbage time at the end there that I didn't even catch. Um, so W's all around this weekend, I learned. Um, but it's episode 22. It feels like the perfect night. Talk a little, Eagles. Uh, we might get in the Sixers towards the end, but we're going to do a game breakdown. We'll go offense, defense, some of the highlights, things that you guys like to see, some of the takeaways. Because we are Philly. We got to critique and, and criticize a little bit, um, even though it was a great win. I'm, I'm criticizing a few players here, not necessarily the team. Um, so you'll just have to, to roll with me on that one. Um, but then with this recent season success, right, who gets the most credit? We'll talk a little bit about that and who deserves it. For what we've seen, um, you know, in this in this month of running running game football that we've seen from the Eagles making adjustments that actually second best team in the league right now to a next level next tier, um, and then Sirianni just just giving him love because I, I like what I'm hearing. I just you know, Jackson said it last week. He's Michael Scott. I think it's a perfect <laughs> description. Um, things just tend to work. He may not you know explain it in all the right ways, um, but. You know, he just he just makes it work. And then we'll talk playoff picture towards the end. So where do we sit? I think before we started the pod mm -hmm. play, it even mentioned playoff percentage went from like 16% to like 43 something now. So we're we're up there in the playoff picture. We uh we should go to the playoffs, but we'll we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um game breakdown, right? So 40 to 29 win over the Saints at home. It's the first home win of the season. Uh, Britt's also mentioned this before we jumped on. First back to back wins um, since last year. Did we even have any I, last year? I did not look it up, but I'm 99% sure that is the first back to back win since 2019. So that, that means something. Um, why can't we win at home? I don't know why we couldn't do that early in the season. But what I do know is it's a dominant win because of the running game 242 yards against. I. I Miss, I miss, um, stated this last uh, pod. This was the number one rush defense. They're not the worst rush defense. I literally looked at the stats and I, I pressed the filter up instead of down or whatever. And I thought they were. I thought they were actually the worst. No, they're the best. They yeah. were the, they're, they're the best rush defense. Yeah. So I just you could have just, pulled me after watching last game. Yeah, I maybe not though anymore. Um, just a couple of other highlights though. Trevor Simeon, he he sucks. He's really bad. Um. Number four, Eagles receiving party of two. It's just Goddard and Smith. And um, number five, in all caps, J. Jaw and Elliot. Bravo to you guys. Great work. Love to see it. Yeah, he sucks. Um, I hate him. <laughs> but before we look at the stats, we had the stats on the screen. What did you guys like from this um, from this forty to twenty nine victory over the Saints? Lot to love. Lot to love about this game. You know. Um, for me, most of all, I think obviously you gotta like the ground game. I think that uh, some people may say that the defense carried the load. There was there were a lot of big picks and everything. We kind of held it held held the Saints off enough to let ourselves score and keep the lead. Um, but for me, I thought the offensive line uh, and the way that they dominated and opened up the run game uh, was what, what, what won us the game. I I mean, did you like, I mean, did you guys see those? Did you guys see that pancake from Mylotta? Absolutely smacking down. <laughs> Mylotta got into a one hand dude. is ridiculous. He also got into a scrap too, which was pretty cool. Uh, well, if, if, <laughs> what, he, yeah. he got in this scrap with Granderson or what? Where, I think I don't know if it was Granderson or not, but yeah, with Davenport, and he he literally drove him back like twenty five <laughs> yards, like he's a little kid. 
And then, like, as soon as he got knocked to the ground, Davenport got up and was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> He's not, you can't take a fight with him. He just threw back like a mile. Dude, the offensive line when healthy is a scary, scary sight. Especially now that yeah. Dickerson is kind of coming into his own as well. And yeah. combine that with the way we're running the ball right now, it is a recipe like, to yeah. a recipe to make an actual run this year. Because I when never thought I'd see the day. The second level, when our line gets to that second Dude, level, Jason they're, Kelsey they're is the best second he's level blocker in the, the league. Walls of people. He is awesome. He's 300 freaking pounds nearly, and he's just running downfield, like making blocks 20 yards past the past the line of scrimmage. Um, well, it's ridiculous because Kelsey Kelsey's an amazing down the field blocker, but Mylotta also he's also getting down the field and blocking. It's like they're all getting he down is there, absolutely yeah, really dude. Really dude he is six foot eight yeah. and 350 pounds, dude. He is an absolute monster out there. Imagine <laughs> seeing that charging you alongside Jason Kelsey, who's a dense 300. That is I crazy. Mean, to see those. Yeah, I feel like we're getting to scary. see those rugby skills in action now, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, dude, what, the way that we're running the ball right now, I mean, I, I never thought I'd see the day that, I mean, I guess since 20, 2017, the day that we would be running 240 <laughs> yards a game. <laughs> like, I just didn't, it seemed like last year with yeah. Doug and the year before yeah. that even, like, we were just a pass-heavy team. We really didn't use our running backs. And now we got three guys out there that can, I guess four guys, like, technically, if you want to throw Gamo in there, that can actually like run the ball well. You can, you could have cut the back half of that sentence off. I like, can't believe we're running the ball. Just right. Period. I mean, all. It, it's crazy. It's would, nice would to you see guys say, adapting. I, I think we've surpassed the Browns and probably the Ravens as the best rushing teams. Would you guys agree that the Eagles are probably, not even probably at this point, the best rushing team in the NFL right now? As of right now, yes, be, right? just because of how little we actually did it in the first half of the season, so that to, like just to even be in the top, to, to not only to be in the top, but to be second in the entire league after basically not running the ball at could, all for like four first. games I straight. I yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure we're I second we still. To the, one. I think we're second still. To the Browns we might still be second. Unless, to the Browns. Nah. unless those stats I looked up oh. were not updated from this week. I mean, if we're going to talk about the run this week, we got to definitely point out how well Jalen, you know, used that to his advantage on some of those option that his option plays. I mean, he is getting up field. He is a yeah. I mean, at this point, he looks just like just just a notch below Lamar Jackson. I mean, he's well, running think, all over teams. I think earlier in the season we were pointing out that he may have been um, not reading the RPOs correctly. Um, and I think now you can sort of see yeah. he's definitely coming into his own. He's pulling the ball when he needs to. He's, t he's passing when he needs to. He's like, he's, he's really mastering the RPOs, I think. Uh, and I don't know. It's, it's crazy to see this uh, much improvement in such a short amount of time. I think we talked about the most, the most comfortable yeah. he's looked since Atlanta, you know, since week one. Dude, he he's looks poised. like, yeah, that's a good, I mean, Magic he work. looks poised right now. Like, he looks so, like, I mean, like I don't even know if he like should look this confident because we still do technically have you know we have a losing record. Obviously, we're all hyped up, but we still have a losing losing record. He just looks <laughs> like he knows, like, I don't know, he just I think he's so confident in himself, which is like nice to see. But he also does it in a humble way. Fritz, how many well, wins think, did we yeah. have last season? We had four. <laughs> Got five now, baby. I mean, let, hey, the boy, let the boy started, ball out. No, started, I know. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, no, I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I I shouldn't have put it that way, but you know what I mean. Like he's just he looks but, like a humble confidence about him that I like. Well, yeah, one no. thing I wanted to bring up about Hertz uh, that we hadn't uh, we're because we're talking about his running ability and everything. Yeah. Um, but I saw on ESPN today they brought up the fact that in the past month Hertz has the highest I think QBR out of any quarterback in the league. So he's, <laughs> he's really? not only is he running good, yeah, he's has the highest QBR. See, so, I was gonna I think the past month. I was gonna say that's that's surprising actually. That is surprising. I, I did not know that. So that's I, that's a good fact to know. I mean, does QBR uh does that throw in like rushing? It it has to, right? Because I mean, because it wouldn't. I mean, he has no way he'd be if it was just passing. yards that could other yeah. been because his passer rating. I guess it could. Yards. I guess passer rating is different. Maybe it was passer rating. It's one of those stats. He has the highest in the NFL. Well, it's definitely not, it's definitely not passer rating deeper. because his passer rating is probably not that good because he's still throwing for like 60% of percentage. I, I do want to <laughs> expand upon what Jackson said because you look at the stats and you see 69 yards, but it's not like a – when you think of Lamar Jackson, he's constantly breaking angles, and that's like the design plays where he just, he just runs all over the field. For Jalen, it's actually a good read. It's not just you know a designed run where he's – I mean, it's 
the second rushing touchdown that he had, um, I went back, I looked at the highlights. He had five receivers covered. Everybody, you know, defenders were stuck to them like like glue. Yeah. So it was a perfect read of just, okay, I had the open space to the right. He's making a, great, uh, a good read that, you know, he's choosing the run when he needs to. I mean, some of the some of those RPOs, those handoffs to Jordan Howard. I mean, you see that he had 63 on 10 for 10 of the day. Um, Sanders, 90, 94 for 16. Um, they're they're efficient, and that speaks a little bit not only to those running backs, but also to Jalen making the right decisions to open up space. I so you guys are saying for those to hit those right, lanes. You want that guy who's going to get six or seven every time. And you, right. you saw on that drive when they gave Jordan Howard the ball like almost every single time. It was right yeah, in the middle. Knocking off like eight yards right of carry. Yeah. Dude, I was, did not realize. Know it's good, man. It's I did good. not realize that Jail or that Miles Sanders had ninety four rushing yards. It's actually and, not, and that I was going to say, a few big it runs, didn't know? feel like a good game for Miles, but he still I ended up him, with ninety four at the end. Of the I think I wanted him I off the field at one point because he was fumbling the ball and. You can't say it was a good game. He had ninety. Four yards, yeah, he fumbled it twice, and then he ran out of bounds uh, to stop the Dude, clock. when he, he ran out of bounds, I wanted to well, choke him, well, too. <laughs> re- relax for a second there, because I was going to say, it doesn't, it looks like a good game, but it's not necessarily a good game. Like, I, here's, so here's my question, because this is, what I want, this is what I want to go around the room and ask. Um, is Miles Sanders a liability? Because you can have a guy, I mean, it's, it's one, I mean, it could have been, I mean, we we have the ball, right? And we're in our own territory. You know, maybe we go up, score, you know, three points, touchdown, whatever. It could be 17-0. Turns into 14-7. Different game. So you can't have that if you want to win games. Small Sanders' liability, do we need to just, I mean, with Jordan Howard hurt now, I don't think you can really turn away from him in these next you upcoming can. games. You can't really do that. No. But And they're you know, not going you, to either. I let's mean, say you fill that spot. But, what? I mean, what do you do with them, I guess, following the season? I mean, they're not gonna I, they're not gonna go away from this season. I mean, I, I think Art Sirianni now. already said, yeah. I mean, you can't now, obviously, with Jordan Howard being out, but he already said that he was gonna could, be our guy. Could you guys see us drafting a, a running back in the second round, or even potentially just moving forward with Howard uh, next year? Um, I feel like, like we were saying, like it looks like a good game for Miles Sanders. He had 16 carries, 94 yards, like six yards a carry. But at the end of the day, it felt like maybe only five or six of those runs were actually good runs. And I just, well, I don't know. When is his contract up? Is it next year? I don't think you can move forward with just Howard. You're definitely gonna have to go. You you can't, and you you got to utilize this line while you run. while you have such a young great line like this. I mean, you can get great running backs late. I mean, we talked about this before. Aaron Jones was a fifth round pick. I mean, Dalvin Cook. I mean, forty forty first. Like you don't have to get them in the first round. You can get easily get them. I mean, the most most great running backs in this league are second rounders. So um, second or third rounder. So I say I'm okay with investing that kind of pick um, and try to get something out of Sanders. Maybe you maybe you get something that's maybe. So Miles point. Sanders is a free agent in 2023. So we have him for next year on his rookie okay. deal. Okay. So we're not going to move think, on at, until his rookie is over. I think I think it's safe to say though that after that. that we probably won't resign him. I would also say we probably won't resign. I mean, there's a chance. Yeah. There's a chance he Unless is he part of the trade next, next year. year just for, like, draft picks or capital, depending on – we could make the move to go for a running back this year. Yeah, Especially well, in the NFL where, like, you don't really seconds. resign running backs often. But the thing yeah. is, I don't think he's bad enough to train him before his contract's over. Running backs are, like, turnstiles, dude. I, but, I, I mean, I, I mean well, I'd rather I, get something thinking, back for him if he's going away in, like in a year a anyway. Team. You could still sell him right. to a team who's trying to like he's still sell. I get agree. a little yeah. extra out of someone and get like a draft pick or something out of it, you know. Yeah, but, but who's gonna I, I who's gonna think, trade for Miles Sanders on one year left in his rookie contract? Know, Maybe somebody who's making a push for a running for back, like, you know? Like yeah, a little push. I mean you see teams that are desperate, it's a little bit of a stretch, but you know, it happens. I Maybe. think I think what Play's saying is it could be like a situation like where when we traded for Jay Ajayi right before uh, like in the middle of the season on our uh, Super Bowl run. I think though at the same time we are looking too far into the future with this like potentially like we we yeah we're, we're it's no, a lot regardless we're gonna ride or die with him this season because we we're, we're trying to make this playoff push. I love Miles Sanders, dude. I I wear his jersey every week, so I mean like I want to keep him on the team, I, yeah. but he has issues um, that like need for to this be next fixed. Year, Probably why he sucks. Well, I he's mean, I player, I would but, love to yeah. have him. I would love to sign him. It just unfortunately the NFL is just 
you know, with, with running backs, it's just how it works. You don't really sign them that often unless they're really, really good. And he's not really at that upper echelon yet. Unless you're Jonathan Taylor or Derrick Henry, you're, you could probably keep moving around. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, he's just top five, top, top seven running backs in the league are probably the only ones that really get like those Camara. big contracts. Cook. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, it's interesting because I think it, at the start of this year, if you had asked us, I think we all would have said that we think Miles Sanders is a better running back than Jalen Hurts is a quarterback. But I think at this point, I have more faith oh, yeah. in Jalen Hurts and his uh, development right, and his future as a quarterback than I yeah. do as Miles Sanders. I, so. I was so up on Sanders. And I didn't know, yeah. I, you know, Jalen was still a huge question mark. I think Jalen's really coming into his own. But Sanders, he, he kind of let me down. I mean, he's still having, like, those ball handling issues. Like, I, like, you can't fumble the ball. I mean, that's we're going against the Saints. It's fine when you put up 40 on them. But when you go up against an actual good team, Kind of like that's because well, I mean, one uh, another, you know, this game wasn't that two, almost far two, off, almost you know? two, 11, almost 11 two points fumbles. is you know, not not a crazy, crazy point differential here. And he literally fumbled it on two, yeah. two runs inside of our inside own 10 yard line in a row, Ten. in a row, Ten. two in a row. Yeah, 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 it was bad. Um, I didn't want to see him on the field after that. I, I said that to you guys, so <laughs> that was clear. I do want to keep evaluating, um, Jalen and kind of how well he did. Um, but I do, let's turn to the receiving core real quick. Mm-hmm. It's really two guys. It's two guys, guys. Uh, it's, it's Goddard. Um, he didn't get hurt. He's, I would say he's godlike, even though it, was, it only shown, is shown as 62 yards, but he was dominant. Uh, he only needs three game. fingers to catch a ball, apparently. Did you see that grab? Dude, Freaking he amazing. Has, he has um, really good hands. Devontae Smith, four for 61. That's like his stat line every every time, like four catches, six targets. I don't know why. That's just you need to get him the ball more a little Dude, bit. Dude, he is I, that. That's like his floor. Nobody though, else. I feel like it's absolutely <laughs> his floor. Um, but basically, you have some yards for uh, Boston Scott. I can I can scroll down here for you guys. Well, the like thing two is, yards. but um, you say, but Jay Jay Jaw twenty three yards for like his first catch in like three years. Yeah, I mean he stinks. Um, but, but, he, but he stinks. Tyree Jackson getting a but, target. I didn't even catch that. But I know I almost picked him up fantasy. But J Jaw, more yards than Jalen Rieger in Jalen's last four games. Combined. Yeah, I mean he also stinks. Um <laughs> like that's first round pick. All right. Rieger in his past in four in the past five games. He's put up zero yards, well, negative one yards, and negative six yards. I'm going to give him a little bit of slack here just because the thing is we're running the ball so damn – I mean, I, a little slide, bit. Right? L- listen, it, well, it's, it's the same reason for Quez Watkins because I think Quez Watkins is better than Jalen Rager. We, That's true. We are, we're we're yeah, running the ball so goddamn much right now, like an absurd amount, and, we're, and it's working. So, like, we don't have to target – like, we don't have to throw the ball that many times. Honestly, obviously, we only threw the ball what was like 22 times. And – the guys that we're going to get it to when we have to throw it are not going to be them. It's going to be Devontae or Dallas I mean, Goddard. Yeah, an astounding 13 completions on the day and nine of those going to Goddard or... Right. Uh, so Matt. it's so, like... I mean, and then that's also... That's fair. Like, that's fair. So like that's kind of like the, the recipe we're running with right now. So I don't expect Jalen Rager or really Quez Watkins to get a lot of targets right now unless it's like a deep shot that we take when we need one. Um... But yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's just unfortunate though because you draft you draft Jalen Rager, and you assume that he's gonna be good enough to be out if he's out there every play yeah. on offense. He's gonna get at least a target or get open or something. It's just at a certain point, I think you have to prove yourself at least somewhat. I mean, I know Jay, I know he's, I know JJ Ortega Whiteside is he's in, he's been on the team longer and he has uh, even less uh, catches than Rager does. He's done worse. But I, I mean, he got out there. He got a catch. I don't. I, Rager is just not doing anything. I don't. I don't. I don't see how he's benefiting the offense. I don't understand what's yeah. going on there. I, felt like- I, I have. I have to challenge that take too, Britt, because if we pick Justin Jefferson, there's no way Justin Jefferson isn't, isn't getting ten targets in the game. I mean, well, yeah, Justin just Jefferson and Jalen Rager is. are completely different players. <laughs> hey, I, you know, I mean, we don't need to state the obvious, though. But that just that just goes back to Howie, I guess, is really the the. the well, point right. I mean. Like, I mean, if you were to tell me this, la- this is a completely different thing of last year when we were yeah, trying to figure right. out what Rager Hindsight. was. Now we know Rager's not that good. Yeah. It's just now unfortunate we, because I, yeah. I think in years past, we've gotten receivers like Aguilar, uh, for example, 
where at least his problem was he, yeah he'd get open but he'd drop the ball and it'd be like okay if he <laughs> if he learned how to catch then he'd be, he'd be better. And he if he learned how to, learn how to catch, catch he, he would probably be a good wide receiver in the NFL. And then <laughs> Raiders, Raiders, problem, Raiders' problem is he's yeah. just not good enough to even get open. That's <laughs> what I'm so no thinking, Jackson, because I see, I see three targets, and I'm thinking, I would imagine that Raider gets the read before JJ, JJ and uh, Tyree Jackson. He's probably just not open most of these well, times. Well, JJ all JJ also just doesn't play. Like he saw the field like the first time in like weeks this week. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So on that play, I'm sure Hertz is looking for Rieger over but JJ first. I, I would say I would say my point with this right is what one. What do you do with Rieger? Right? Do you do just make him a punt change? specialist or do you something? Do anything in yeah, but he's already <laughs> that, and he's not. And I would, but I don't think it's um you know I, listen. What do you just what do you do with him other than make change up the play designs because i just i just don't know at this point like you you need to do something um, i think at this point honestly you demote him a little bit i think you move quez into his spot quez is, i think proven himself more yeah, than rager has i feel like quez already like has the spot honestly like i feel like he gets more targets well he has more targets but he's not he's the slot you know i just think he'd see the field more maybe he's getting targets because he's successful in the slot i don't know it's just unfortunate because i feel like rager he goes out there he doesn't do anything. He doesn't get open. He doesn't get targets. And then we put him as the punt returner to hope, like maybe spark his thing, like get him, give him a spark to get him going. And he's atrocious as a punt returner too. He's, he's, he's yeah, always yeah, making no, he's, he's not. He's not he's that good at that either. But... There either. Uh, I mean, so. I mean, he's. I mean, either way, like I mean, you're saying give him, give Quez Watkins like his spot, but like, I mean, they're all on the field. They're all three of them are on the field the most out of any <laughs> wide receiver. Quez has one so. target. No, I know, yeah. but I'm saying like, are, he, they are point, just, in the starting right. roster though. Like, it's not like we're moving someone down from the starting wide receiver spot. They're, those are our three receivers, and and that's I my point. Like... Maybe you do give JJ all just a chance. Like, well, I, I think there's play designs, Brits, where you only have two wide receivers on the field. I mean, I guess, yeah, but I mean, that running, would be at least a two tight end set. If we're running but... a two tight end set, which we don't do that much anymore, not because Hear we don't out. have I that second like... tight end. Yeah, go ahead. I feel like it does kind of make sense to potentially put Arthega Whiteside over Rager. Because if you think about like how I think wide receivers are set up, um, we've got Devontae Smith. He's like that finesse guy. He's uh, he's good at route running. And he'll just get open. I feel like Quez, he's the speed guy in the slot, which is good. And then Arthega Whiteside, he uh, he's like a big-bodied receiver, like sort of like uh, Alshon Jeffrey was. And we I think we're missing that. And I feel like Rager might be sort of redundant. Like he's like he's like half speedster, half like finesse well, and he's just yeah. he's just not as good as, as like as good at either of those as I, like quez or uh Devontae are i think you guys think are over, that, uh, dra- i think you're drastically over like uh, overlooking the fact that jj oh, arthur oh, and freaking sucks dude like he's terrible that, uh, like, <laughs> wait, wait, yeah, wait, wait, so i think that allows us to go into uh this week's hashtag which is a uh, hashtag jj reboot no, no, I hate this hashtag. Jay Jaws too. We didn't, we didn't know. Yeah. Jay, I mean, if anything, just bench both of them and bring <laughs> another. <laughs> if anything, bench like both of them and grab a guy from the practice squad because, like, that seems to work better than these like All draft right, picks we, we should, have. Too, <laughs> I feel like it lose. just, it just doesn't hurt to try something. It, at the end of the day, like zero negative one yards. I say just keep yards. doing what we're doing. Screw oh. it. We're running the ball. We're winning the games. <laughs> I, you know what though? I mean. I would rather JJ get that time if he's at least blocking too. Like if like he's Rieger, a blocker. Rieger should not be. Oh, out is he? <laughs> he no, he actually is. Wait, like, who, I, wait who is? JJ, I think he is. Doesn't is play. He doesn't play. Like this is the first time he's been on the field in weeks. Listen, <laughs> he has listen, really bad, like block gradings though you, usually. You, yeah, you you got to give him something. I mean, those screen plays when they kick it out to a receiver, I'd rather have JJ blocking than Rieger. Are you kidding me? Like he's just bigger in size. I guess you're right. Let's let you're right. If we need if we need him to block, let's get him out there. <laughs> and JJ, yeah. JJ, like even if he's just a lineman yeah. in the wide receiver position, at least he's got heart, man. He's like he's giving it his all on special teams. That's, this is my point. Like Jalen Rieger, I feel like has a post on Instagram every week saying. Yeah, I know. You know he's. I mean, he's the worst. I don't think he's, he's like. Just... I'm not getting catches. I'm not getting targets. I'm not getting open. But I'm good. <laughs> it's like he keeps it's reiterating like, how good he is, like, and he's like, "Cause I know he used to like go back and forth deleting his Twitter oh, all the time." The, post, the posts are bad. Yeah, he had some of those. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. They're rough. At, at least that should least, honestly be the biggest red flag. You know, Jay Jaws doing... not not saying trade me or like get me to another team where I can play because he, I think he realizes, hey, I'm not that great, but like you know, I'll get my shot, I'll get my time. But I don't know. 
Let's move on. Let's move on from this, Jay Jaw. Yeah, well, screw this guy. I actually, bit, I actually have a point. I actually have a point that I wanted to bring up uh, and see what you guys thought of it. Because one of the, like, obviously the big major change that everybody's talking about in the offense uh, from in the past four weeks to the beginning of the season is that we're running the ball and we're basically a, a run a run game heavy team now and our entire offense is based off the run. To me, it seemed like a lot, the biggest reason why we were losing those games besides the passing was the fact that we had gotten so many penalties. And I feel like in the past four yeah. weeks, we've been penalized so much less. I think the team has come together. Do you guys think that's like a coaching thing? Like everybody sort of bought into Skiriani. He's found a way to round everybody together and just stop the penalties. Because I feel like those penalties were killing us and now we're not really getting any of them anymore. I would say more so, Jackson. It's probably a team chemistry thing. Honestly, uh, it, that's probably everyone just it's getting tough the to same say. It's tough to say. I mean, it is like, you know, we're getting to the latter half of the season now, so maybe it is just like uh, everybody's getting – I mean, it shouldn't take this long, but I guess everybody's kind of getting more comfortable with each other because it is kind of a newer – you have a lot of new guys coming in and working with vets. Like, we have a, a, a big mix of rookies and vets kind of thing. Um, Maybe they're just getting – yeah, they're just getting used to each other, I guess. I don't know. It's tough to say when it comes down to penalties. It could be coaching. It could be just chemistry. How about, our, almost, blitz, how about yeah. our blitz schemes this week? Dude, we were we were running some we, like a bunch of different like defensive schemes. Yeah. Like, I feel like we were changing it up a lot. I, obviously, once we got the lead, it had to get we had we had changed it up because kind of have to. But I do want to touch on that. But just on Jackson's point, I feel like, and I kind of agree with the other guys. It's just I think it's a mix of I think it's probably more I put more weight into the team gelling a little bit and the chemistry over time. I mean, you had some injuries on the line earlier in the season. Now you know the the line's been healthy. You know throughout the rest of the of this season they kind of gel and and know what their role is um but I, I would have to go back and look into what those penalties are i would say they're probably mostly false starts but if they're holding penalties maybe that does have to do with the run you know where you're kicking out and, and going and taking a guy out rather than you know trying to stop the pressure by holding somebody on the pass rush maybe right, that i mean has something to actually do with it i don't know i would definitely there say funky penalties remember it was like it was like, uh, you know it was i think it was probably partly coaching because of a lot of it was illegal formation stuff where it was like yeah a guy would go into motion or like a guy would be downfield like this really weird things that you like don't see a lot that like wasn't working so i think you know Syria, or like, like an illegal block or something I think Sirianni was like, let's not make this confusing for, you know, for, for these guys. Uh, let's, let's simple it down, you know, simplify it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's, let's do um, get to the defense a little bit. So blitzing schemes as Flay and uh, Bricks was saying, you know, a lot of them were looked to be like seven man blitzes. You would have Singleton. He would kind of be a late blitzer. It was kind of weird. I wasn't sure if he was like playing the spy kind of role there. Just watching the quarterback, um, you don't need to because it's Trevor Simeon. He's not going to run anywhere, even though, of course, he gets a, a rushing <laughs> touchdown. Um, How about him almost tripping over the ball when he's yeah, like That was great. That was great. Right. Hilarious. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, I like there was a lot more blitzing in the game. It was the kind of game where you need the blitzing to, to throw off Simeon. I mean, he's really bad, guys. He threw into triple coverage and didn't even make it to his guy. So, well, I mean, he's... Um, I don't understand why they're He's not playing Taysom I mean, Hill, dude. It doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't make sense <laughs> for how much they're paying that guy, too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, more blitzes. Singleton, less snaps again, and TJ Edwards being the guy getting that one-year extension, probably because of his play this week. So. Um, all right. Well, guys... TJ Edwards has seemed like the most talented linebacker that we've had, I feel like, all season. Have you? Is it just me? Yeah. I haven't noticed Singleton as much. I'm not sure if we're playing him less snaps or he's gotten better. Uh, do you guys know what's going on there? Because we're definitely not playing him as much. He's not playing as much. Yeah, he's very limited in snaps. If anything, you saw him on those blitz type plays where he wasn't a coverage guy. He was just because he is absolutely forward. abysmal in coverage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. He has no idea what to do out there. He is like seven yards from his guy. He's supposed to be on. <laughs> I mean, a, a definite, definite upgrade in the in the draft that we need to look into next year. The coverage, friggin' amazing. I went back and looked at. I mean, there wasn't. Oh yeah. There's very few plays where, I mean, we, you know, we had inches between you know our defenders and the receivers. I mean, they were. I mean, granted, not a great set group of uh, receivers on the Saints, but and not no, not a great quarterback. Definitely not. At all. But with that said, you know, when it turns into 82 yard or uh, not 82 yard, but 
pick sixes and fumbles and yeah, two picks on the day. I mean, turnovers win you games, and we're finally seeing it for these guys. Um, mm-hmm. Well, it's for, starting to seem like time. we almost have a stud at every single position in our secondary. I mean, at this point, like, Steve Nelson might be our worst coverage guy and he's he's good so it's, it's i he's, feel like maddox is yeah. having a maddox amazing yeah. comeback yeah. Like, this is our best secondary we might have had in like 10 years maddox reboot too maddox is definitely getting the reboot i will i will sign up for he's, that hashtag he's also got an extension <laughs> which um which is great which is like can you guys good. Or, have to get a maddox jersey not, like, I just feel like just to not overlook the moment don't uh, do that brits because then i'll start sucking uh, that's true can you guys remember <laughs> A secondary that we've had this good in like like is this the best secondary we've had since like Lido and Sheldon? No, I mean, it's not better than that group. I know no it's way. not better. It's than definitely group, not better than them. I, I don't know. The Super Bowl team had a pretty solid secondary. I mean, that, I, no, I <laughs> not as good as this though. I don't think. No, I mean they let up what like 500 yards in the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, um, but that was a weird Super Bowl. The, the, yeah, but still, I don't think yeah. we had the star talent or like the level of play on our in our secondary since we we definitely never that we well, I feel like we've we always had, had one guy. Because I I think back to Asante Samuel, I think back to yeah. Um, we had like Nassim, one star. On the team or never worked out. It was always one guy, and that was it. So yeah, and like granted that that uh, that Super Bowl year, we definitely had more than one guy, and that was a great secondary. I don't want to like overlook them at all. I just feel like this is a special yeah. secondary. It's not like, it's by no means like the best, like insane, like some secondary that we should be like, this is the best secondary in the league or anything. But this is a very good secondary. We have like. No, I think our secondary is college. finally, finally gotten what? to the point where it is what? Yeah. good on all, I mean, all, good in all, all positions. I, I, there's no guy I'm sitting there thinking like, we got to get this guy out of here. You know? Certainly not, <laughs> not a Ronald Darby back there. No more Ronald Darby. No, you know, not. Like, I know, I know, I know. That's the guy you don't, Alone you don't like. Dude, dude, come on, man. He was on the Super Bowl um, team, dude. <laughs> just, just, he, he was on the Super Bowl team. He actually, he didn't have a terrible game on the Super Bowl. He was, he was good back then. I think he uh, had a couple of years where he was starting to stink. Though. He would just he was, <laughs> always get the fucking beat and just like ball right over his head every but, time. But no, seriously. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Think, think about this. From when's the last time we weren't talking so badly about the defense where we only focused on the linebackers. Like yeah, I think the linebackers always, are the problem right now. And it's always, always been the cornerbacks. It's all, we're always yeah. every season critiquing the cornerbacks and how badly they get beat. It's always been coverage, do we always so, were getting beat. To only focus on the linebackers is a really good sign. For it's an upgrade. Right now. It's definitely an upgrade. Especially because um, I, I know we're talking about like that Super Bowl team. I think that Super Bowl team, the secondary was just so good because they were benefiting from how quickly our defense was getting to the quarterback. Yeah. Our yeah, line was so. just it's true. Yeah. Unbelievable. Putting, unstoppable. Pressure there. Yeah. No, it was unstoppable. We also had Malcolm Edwards, Jenkins yeah. back there, you know? Yeah. So. He was, he's <laughs> a, a, a difference maker for sure. Um, TJ Edwards, Sirianni likes him because he just punches the ball out. So all that stuff that... He does Gannon, do that. That, that Gannon uh, highlighted like the preseason, kind of like we're going to teach turnovers and just punching the ball out where you can. I feel like he's the only guy that's maybe doing that, and I'm glad to see oh, him. Oh, uh, place. speaking of punching the ball out, shout out Fletcher Cox, finally making a play. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Finally forcing a fumble, well, finally right. getting on the stat board. Oh, so he, for- he forced the fumble. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. Better Love late than never. It. Yeah. Love to see it. Oh, that's that's just the theme of the season, I think. Better late than never. Right. Um, but another another funny thing, just defensively, you know, Sirianni was on this morning, and he, he said, you know, he's going to get a picture of the defense where they all celebrated it after Slay's pick six, and he's going to put it up in his uh in his home gym. So he's just more Sirianni type things. That is just, definitely put, a Sirianni thing to do. Squad. But I do love it. Sirianni type thing. Like. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's another good reference or um, good. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's like good. <laughs> he should. We should make a TV show based on him. <laughs> he, he, I feel like Sirianni should be a TV show. Um. But what do you guys want to see? I'll just say for the defense question for this is what do you guys want to see more of going throughout the rest of the season with this defense? It's tough because it's tough because they're so up and down. And it's like, you, I guess they you are. could say that it's like, oh, okay, let's like we blitzed a lot this week. And I think we blitzed a lot of last week too against uh, Denver. Um, I mean, you could say like, yeah, let's get more aggressive and everything. And it does seem like when we, when we are, um, having good games on defense, we are being more aggressive. So I guess, I mean, I guess, 
what he said he where he was going to do before the season started was to be aggressive, and it seems like a couple games here and there he just won't do it, and that's when we get 30, 40 points scored on us. So I, I maybe we just keep up with these blitzes, and, and maybe that's what's helping out the secondary too. You know, like making I mean, making them throw in, making them throw awkward throws, and getting those picks and forcing turnovers. I I think so because it's there were a lot of third down and longs yesterday. And it was because of probably those early blitzes. Yeah, which we don't that, usually or, or see. Just, um, <laughs> that, you know, uh, caused it to go to fourth down there. Which, yeah, you don't see a lot. So it's it's nice. Um, but all right. Let's, so uh, before we get off to move on to the playoff picture, um, who gets the most credit in all of this, right? I mean, there's Sirianni. There's Jalen. There's the running backs in the O-line. I say like running back slash O-line. It's really been amazing over this past month. Best running game in the league. But also in that mix, does Howie Roseman get any credit in all of this? In any of this? To give Howie credit, he he put the team together. You know, he might not be perfect. Uh, he's this, definitely this not. This is perfect. where you might might get uh, people to go against each other. Here, let's see. I'm trying to think of like, you know, I mean, obviously Howie picked Jalen in a very very controversial pick, <laughs> and he seems to be getting to the point where we're, we're starting to trust him and we think he could be our guy for, you know, the foreseeable future. And then also, I mean, I mean, real, realistically, who else are you going to give Howie credit for besides, like, Devontae Smith? No, you're, you're short-selling Howie. Howie gave this fucking goofball Sirianni a chance and everybody clowned on him for it for, for so long. And you know what? It actually worked. It, it's working. I, he he but decided I, to fire Peterson, which was a highly questionable move and switch to Sirianni to sort of rebuild this new culture. And it was, I don't know. I think it was a crazy move to do and it pan it's panning out. We're watching it pan out. I think we're a better team now than we would have been if we kept Doug. I think he made a hard, he made a hard decision and you have to give him credit for it. Well, you've definitely succeeded Caputi in uh, getting us to go against each other. Cause I completely disagree with that. <laughs> I, I don't think give, yeah, yeah. him giving him giving this goofball Sirianni a chance is something that we can say, oh, Hallie Roseman, great job on making Nick Sirianni our head coach, a first or a first year head coach, and firing Doug. Like Yeah, it worked out or actually it hasn't even really worked out yet, but it is seeming like it it, it like he is a decent coach. But I don't know. I wouldn't say like, oh, he's a genius for finding this guy. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't think you have to give him all the credit. I think clearly, I think most of the credit should be on like the offensive line, Hertz for adapting and Sirianni for adapting the offense to both Hertz and. Yeah, I would the say if line. anything, Sirianni gets the credit because he's the one who's Howie adapting. Is more favorable when our expectations are lower. Yeah, I agree with that. Because my expectations were that we were going to suck this year <laughs> because of Howie, <laughs> <laughs> but. I mean, I don't know. It's yeah, tough. I mean, okay. obviously, I think obviously, thrives in situations where we're underdogs. That's true. Just because. So, this week, Jackson Even... thinks he's a genius. This week, Fritz thinks he's a dumb dumb. Um, well, I, no, I don't think I mean, he's just, a dumb dumb. I'm just saying he's I don't. Clearly, know. He's he clearly has a piece of this. Like he he drafted my lottery. Well, he has a piece of this well, because he is our GM. Yeah. <laughs> and he made it, he might he made some good free agent signings. You know, in like trades, like trading for Slay. That like that panned out. Yeah. Signing Steve Nelson, that panned out. Like Harris panned out. It's I don't know. There's like a lot of signings that he made low key that like I think are really good. No, I mean I think he's done a, yeah. a, a pretty pretty decent job of rebuilding us, and I will give him credit for that. But I'm not gonna be like, oh, like we're back on the road to like playoff contention every year because of Howie. Like so far, like. But I don't yeah, know. it's not. Live but... by Howie, die by Howie, and it changes every year. I feel like. Yeah, it's kind of tough. Yeah. <laughs> I think the true test for Howie now is if can we build a team that goes to the Super Bowl or contends for the Super Bowl back to back to back. And like, honestly, that's what I'm years saying. In a row. That's the, yeah. obviously the, the goal. Test for Howie, the biggest test for Howie is going to be this offseason when he's got to make all these picks in the first round to really stock up this that team and make true. sure that it's ready to compete. You, um, yeah. I mean, you and you say that, Flay, but it's, again, it's really hard to win the Super Bowl. So I, I get it, right? You'd rather build a franchise that's actually going to go back to back to back. It's making the playoffs every year. So you actually have a better chance of winning the Super Bowl. But if he, if he does this rebuild and it's like, all right, wins the Super Bowl in 2017, 
then keeps rebuilding, 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 wins it in like 20, I don't know, 22, 23, like six or seven years later, that's pretty damn good too, even if it's not a franchise like you have a Patrick Mahomes taking you there every year. I mean, I, if, if you can do that, I mean, what I will say is just it, as good, I think. Since Howie yeah, has been here, we have been in contention more so than we have not been in contention. So it is that bodes well for him. He's clearly an above average uh, GM. I think you can't I, be a bad GM and just stumble your yeah, way into it. It's a like he piece. is above average yeah. GM. He just, his, but his, like, just his, like, misses have been terrible at points. His you misses, know what I mean? His, like, misses are, <laughs> his misses are as low as they can get. His, his highs are super high. Yeah, I mean, most of the time he's pretty consistent. Mylotta versus Rager. That's what it the is. Problem, I mean, the problem is, every time he takes, like, a home run swing on, a, on like, a player that he thinks he's, like, He's like he's they're he's like they're a little undervalued. I'm gonna pick them right here, right, where, uh, and just sneak one one in on everybody. It's like a Hall of Fame player has picked the next pick, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I will say the only time that he's ever done that and it actually has worked, or it seems like it's working, is Jalen, which is surprising because he was a backup quarterback to be he was picked as a backup. You know, you, you yeah, I I see where you're going with it. I mean, more more is to be seen, but it, it looks. Like I mean, a great realistically, value if pick. We, it looks if, like a great value pick. If we didn't pick Jalen in the second round, where does when, he go? When will he get picked? I don't know. Yeah, where does he go? No, that's a great point. Um, but yeah, same same kind of um, uh, list that I would have as far as like running backs. Uh, you know, oh, I I give credit to O line first. I mean, they're playing amazing. The O line um, is. It's got to be the best. Oh my god! It, even and um, we we talked about the run, but the pass defense or the pass blocking yesterday was uh, unreal. Oh Jalen had all day on multiple plays, <sighs> which mean, was tough because we still didn't make any plays off of them because I don't know nobody I mean, got open or something. But like he could have started a play, ran up to Tony Luke's and got a cheese stick <laughs> and, and still throw. For, there was like tw- you know, twelve seconds of coverage on one of those plays. Unbelievable. And I, I think. I think we have to give credit where credit is due. We had, well, specifically, I think you, Joe, have been saying Lane Johnson potentially is at the end of his career. But I don't think it's any coincidence that this win streak or this new evolution of the offense has come about as soon as Lane Johnson came back. I don't think I saw he was at the end of his career. Yeah, I, I think he was. A lot of words in his mouth. I think I said. I think I said. I mean, he is definitely injury prone, <laughs> but I mean, like yes, that, that. when he's on the field, he is good. He's productive. But I'm saying, like, I was, I think what I was saying is that, like, you know, we're, you have to look to kind of like, I don't know, look I towards think, the future more so that, than you look towards the past with him. You know, I think he's clearly still an absolute stud out there, and he's like, I think a big he's, saying he's closer to to retire. I mean, he's he's, he's on the back end on of the, his career on for the sure. Falling, yeah. falling on the peak, on the falling side of it, but. But it's still on the very at the very high point. I yeah, would say. No, he's okay, definitely good, and he's just not on the field that much. Is the is, is the pro- main problem I have with him? He's on the start of the decline, I would say, yeah. but only because of his age, really. Um, okay, let's let's talk playoffs. Let's wrap up there um, and just talk about this playoff picture. So here's where I'm at. I'm not completely ready to say that this is an elite team. I still have to say because they're beating bad teams right now. Definitely they look not an elite. elite team. They look elite in how they've played. They have the potential to be if they keep doing what they're doing and if they keep executing at this level of play. Um, but they beat Simeon. They beat Teddy Bridgewater. Um, you know, again. Don't sleep on Teddy. I think Teddy's pretty good. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's uh, – best line, best, you know, running running game in the league right now. Um, should get to the playoffs. The sixth and seventh seed right now are the Vikings and the Saints. Pretty big game yesterday. Um, Huge game. still playing against the Seahawks, the 49ers, which is big because they, they get the tiebreaker, obviously, I think, from beating us. Um, but look at, you know, kind of the outlook of the season. Five of six games are divisional, four against the Giants and um, the football team. And, you know, maybe Dallas is already a playoff team and they're just throwing in the backups for the hell of it. Um, some people I hear are saying, does Dallas fall apart? Do we win the division? I'm not going that far. But we should, knowing that the Vikings and the Saints are there right now, we should get to the playoffs with maybe the easiest schedule on the back end. I mean, realistically, what we only have to beat out, I, I mean, you think the Niners or the Vikings end up with a better record? I think it's tough. That's I think close. It's, That's close. It's, I think the Niners actually do. 
I think it might well, be the Niners the too. I, I feel so. like they did just the win. Vikings, Vikings did just win last week against Green Bay, which is that's a big win. Huge. The could Vikings have a very good team, and I think the Vikings could potentially get that other wild card spot. I think if we're gonna win, we're gonna have to win out and hope that the 49ers don't win out. I think their schedule is hard. We don't than have us, to win so out. I think that's a possibility. We definitely don't have to win out. I think we if we get the nine wins, I think if we get the nine wins, we're probably in. If we get the ten wins, we're definitely in. I just I'll mean I think we need to. We obviously. We're gonna have to fight for all of these Ws. I think there's a good chance that we can have a winning back end of the schedule, um, and finish the season above 500. But I think we're gonna have to definitely fight. And I think you saw some of that fight spirit, you know, this Sunday, last Sunday. It's. Um, I agree. It's tough because even though these last few games that were like these last six games are against bad teams. Four of them are divisional games, and we all know how divisional games go. You and well, know? that's what it really comes down to: is how <laughs> or good five are the of them actually. Sorry, five of them. Are, how good is the football team? Because it's if if we can beat them in all four of those games, we pretty much have the playoffs locked up. I think we're gonna beat the we're gonna beat the Jets. If we don't beat the Jets, then we're a sham. Uh, yeah, if we don't beat the Jets, we don't deserve to make the playoffs. That's that's <laughs> it's a fact. Just, it's just how much better are we than the Giants in the football team? I think we're I think we could easily get two against the Giants. Yeah. Um. But there's a high possibility we split with the football team. The football team, I think, I is underrated that. in the same aspect yeah. that we're underrated. They're kind of on fire um, right now. Yep. Yeah, they just took out the Panthers with Cam Newton, uh, and Cam Newton looks like he's uh, they beat the Bucks. You know, much improved from last. Season. <laughs> they yeah, beat they the beat Bucks. the Bucks. I mean, two win streak. They're kind of looking like, um, like, uh, yeah. If I, I totally agree with that. I, I think the Giants are bad. I think we should. I mean, yeah. again, division games go any either way, no matter what. Giants no stink and they're all. hurt as hell, so I think they should be the Giants. Bad. We should go two on, on them. I'd be happy if I get a split with the football team. You want you want to get both because you need to get both. Here's the but situation. They're dicey. They're very dicey. Here's the situation I'm looking at, and I agree with basically what most of what you just said, or pretty much all you just said. We gotta be the Jets. Don't be the Jets. Chalk up the season. Uh, yeah. I think we yep. will be the Jets though. Um, probably. I'm I'm thinking we do beat the Giants in both games. Maybe we lose the maybe we lose the one in in New York, but I don't know. I think we should beat the Giants in both games. Probably split with Washington. And then the Dallas game is is weird because if Dallas has like a, a, a the, the playoffs locked up, they could be sitting guys that week. But you know, like it could be weird, like week eighteen. You know, it's, is Dallas in contention for the first seed playoffs? Or are they like? Yeah, they're seven and three right now. Yeah, they're, 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 you're talking about the number one seed. They could yeah, they could get the bye technically. In contention. Yeah, yeah so then they would um, definitely lock up people. They might be at the point where they fight for that, but I but yeah. I don't know because they they it's, just had did they have back to back losses? Or it no? depends on how they, the rest I don't know. Season goes. They, they still have a have good chunk of season to go, guys. Lost to the Broncos, killed the Falcons, and then lost recently to the Chiefs. So it's right, right. Two, so um, they're seven and four. One I and think. two over the past three weeks. They're now seven and three. Oh, seven and three. Um, so they had they their were on a bye. We oh, might yeah. be able to see them lose for a nice Thanksgiving Day special on Thursday against the Raiders. Raiders. Which they'll probably beat the Raiders. I think they should win that game. Yeah. Um, you never so know. That's interesting. You really never we're, know. We're kind of hoping that they do good, but not good enough to where they're in contention for that uh, home field advantage. You know. It's uh, I I that's think we dicey. want them I think we want them to get the first seed in a way, because then they'll sit up sit people against us. We just want them no, to have no. it it I all decided by week eighteen. Yeah, I mean uh, I mean obviously you want Dallas to lose every single game, but I mean here's the thing I win winning the division would be such a huge stretch. If they yeah, lose, I don't think we really even like if can they unless lose, Dallas just starts it, 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 it kind of this this game on Thursday kind of decides it all, right? If they lose, we're two games back. We would have one game playing against them, and they would have to play the Cardinals, who will be fighting for that first seed and buy spot. And Connor Cardinals, will be back. And he will be back. That's a losable game. I mean, just saying, that's the I mean, that's the mentality you have to have. Even though if we, we think it's better for them to win, you know, I mean, obviously the mentality is that we want to win the division. Um so it's not out. It's not completely out of the realm of possibility. Is basically what I'm saying. But it is a really far stretch. Giants are playing right now, by the way. I want to see what there's what the game's going on. That's actually kind of crazy <laughs> yeah. because it is honestly realistic that they could uh, lose to the Raiders. The Raiders this year have beaten good teams. I think they uh, 
I know yeah. they beat the the uh, Ravens. I'm not sure who else they beat that was good. It's, it's um, always one that can go different ways. Yeah. It's the second quarter right now. Giants ten, Bucks ten. Oh. <laughs> Could you imagine a situation where we beat <laughs> the Cowboys to win the division and then in the wild card beat them to knock them out? That is possible. Well, no. If we win the division, we wouldn't be in the wild card. <laughs> but we we would probably be... would still have a low record and play in the wild card weekend. We would probably be the fourth divisional team. Is that how that works? I can't remember. So we probably would. Yeah. Well, well, the first first and second team would get the bye. Right. Yeah, and then and, three and, and four then... play the wild card teams. Three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, right. yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. But oh, man. right, I don't know though because there's how does that work with the seventh team, team, right? Yeah, how does that work with I'm the I'm not sure. Team? I actually haven't looked at that now. Actually, no, no, no. So, wait, no, no. There's not first and second seed. It's only first seed now, I think. Gets oh. the bye. Because there's an extra team. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because okay. that's how it was last year, I believe. So, well, you're, uh, it, pro- it, pro- it, might, it probably wouldn't. It, I mean, that would be great. That would be awesome. But I don't know if it would work out that way. Could, I don't know. I, th- th- you have to look into so much like for that to happen. But, yeah. I mean... There technically is a scenario like what like what you just said where we could play Dallas for the division. Like we have so many freaking times. <laughs> it hasn't gone our way very often, yeah. so it's, which is making me trepidatious about over it. The, over the past, years, I mean, we played yeah. the last time we played for the division, we did win, and it was against the Giants. So last uh, week we had predicted our records for yes. the uh, remainder of the season. I said seven and zero, oh, and I'm sticking with uh, undefeated for the rest of the regular season. What are you guys thinking at this point? Because I think it hopes should probably be a little bit higher than they were last week. Oh, man. I like I said, I think it will be. We got six games left. I think we win four. Six games left, win four. Because we beat. I think. I think. I think we beat the Jets. I think we beat the Giants twice, and I think we beat the uh, Washington once out of those. Puts, you teams. Nine, puts it in nine and eight. Yeah. Which and you think we lose to the Dallas? I was with you, Jackson. And I, I mean, if Dallas is really. playing all their guys. I lose Dallas. I don't know. Tough, tough game. But I don't want. I, I don't know. It's tough. Um. All right. Yeah. I'm, Is it I'm in Philly? I'm gonna go four two. I'm gonna go four two. Is it in Philly? It's in Philly. <sighs> it's in Philly. A lot of these games are. We we always split with Dallas. Well, no, no, three of them. Three of them are. We always split three. with Dallas, and we have lost them already once. So. Austin, are you coming with me? Seven's yeah. a lot. That's a lot. That's hard to do. Let's keep, let's keep the W's rolling. Let's seven the games. Rolling, are, if, if we win seven more seven games, games, we're we're pot- we're potentially in the running for first seed in the NFC. <laughs> How many? Yeah. Yes. How many we games? We definitely have... are in contention. That, that could be eleven. That could be eleven and six. <laughs> no, it'd be twelve. How many games have we won in a row at this point? Three. Oh, no, you're right. It'd be eleven. It'd be eleven. You're right. My bad. My bad. What was it? How many games in a row have we won at this point? Three. No, two. Two. Just two. Two? Okay. So that was an eight game win streak to end the season. I think that's I I'm I'm in on that. I think I'm in on that. We'd be in super we'd be, I think that we would be in Super Bowl mode at that point. <laughs> you, right. Hey, I, I didn't say it wasn't I last week I didn't say it wasn't possible. I did not say it wasn't possible. Oh, I'm gonna look something up real quick. Um But so yeah, I mean last week I didn't think five and two was possible. After this week. I'm thinking it's it's definitely possible. I love how we've just talked ourselves in the Super Bowl. Um, we'll talk <laughs> I've seen people on ESPN <laughs> saying yeah, nah, the Eagles will make it. the postseason. So I mean, the I think the collective narrative about the Eagles is shifting. I think well, people in ESPN are really starting to buy in now. Dude, I people are say, loving Jalen Hurts, loving him. I will say at this I point, love, the only I agree, the, we would only be beating ourselves at this point if we don't make the playoffs like this is i think the expectation should be to, i think the expectation should be to make the playoffs we should I just don't we I should just make don't, the playoffs i just we really should. don't we see should. barring like injuries on the offensive line or just us swaying away from this right run game that's working so well i don't really see us losing any of these games i feel like our our line and our run game were just so dominant it's just we're, i feel like we're putting up like 40 points every dude week. jackson is slowly but surely Coaxing me into a six in a a six game win streak right now. No, I don't see. I don't see how hard that is. I don't see how any of these teams. I don't see how any of these teams are going to put up over thirty points against us. And I feel like we're scoring over thirty points every week. I just, I really don't see us losing. 
We're playing scrubs. We're literally playing scrubs <laughs> for the rest Let's of the year. Let's go, Jackson. Let's go. Fo football six football six team, out, football team is scrappy. I'm telling you. I mean, they, they did beat the box. They, they are did they are a very great scrappy. defense and that, Tom Brady. That's what, Tom Brady. like I said, that's what's keeping me away from, like, you know, saying we get five more wins. And in, and obviously scary. Dallas. It's so tough. All right, let's, Wait, let's, 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 let's be real here, though. The Washington football team. I feel like the Washington football team is, like, they have, first of all, they have such bad luck. And second of all, they're, like, I, I feel Listen, like I don't, they're, they're Jackson, destined to lose for some reason. Jackson, like, like, come, I feel like I feel like the the Reds or sorry, the football team to us is what we are to the Just Cowboys. Just call Washington like some, so much easier. Somehow, <laughs> somehow, like somehow, Cowboys always beat us, um, and then you know we just always beat you know Washington basically. Giants, we kind of actually we kind of beat up on the Giants a lot. So, well, uh, this, actually, this, yeah. this this is actually what I was just about to say. Yeah. This next week against the Giants is going to be very telling. Come back to me after next week, Jackson. I might be feeling that, I might be feeling like we're we're ready to go because if we come out and smoke the Giants in New York, that'd be a s amazing fucking feeling. Score prediction. I'm score, the dark side, brother. score prediction. So last week I predicted 30, 20, add ten plus to that, and I would have been on. Uh, Jackson was the closest, thirty-five to twenty-four. You said so. Um, you know, but either way, you guys were everybody was spot on because we all said um, we would win the game. You know, handily. What did so, I say? Thirty-five seventeen. Uh, yeah, thirty-one seventeen. Thirty-one seventeen. Um, Giants. I don't. I feel like you know. I feel like it, it's just one of those games where it's going to be low scoring for some reason. So do I. Um, just for some reason, even though we've been scoring so much, I'm going to say. 21-10 at the half, 24-17 Eagles for the dub at the end of the game. Okay. Garbage, time, garbage time points, comeback points for Daniel Jones, but we still win it pretty, uh, you know, with confidence, just, you know, knowing that we'll win the game towards the end. I'm not doing halftime points. We're going we're gonna to win hey, 30. I'm, I'm predicting halftime points. We're going to win 30. <laughs> we're, yeah, no, no. I'm gonna win. We're gonna win 35 to uh 21. 35, 21. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna have another uh two like those TD, numbers. Two TD runs by Jalen Hurts, uh, and a follow up with Devonte at least, and the rest. 35, 21. See, at first I said it was gonna be a low scoring game, but now I'm thinking it's only gonna be a low scoring game for the Giants. I'm gonna say we're gonna blow them out 35 to 10. Boom! Brits blow out. Wow. What's the wow. scoring breakdown? Wow. Uh, my scoring breakdown is that we're going to score touchdowns. <laughs> I actually, break it down for us. Beautiful analysis. <laughs> oh my god. I know, I know. I'm saying that we're going to go six and zero, but for me, for some reason, I feel like there's potential that we come in hot, confident, and maybe overlooking the Giants. And I think the Giants potentially could score a lot on us this game, and it's going to be a shootout. I think we're going to win forty-two to thirty-five. I think they're. Jesus. I think they're going to come back. I think it's going to be a freaking shootout. I think Daniel Jones is for some oh. reason going to run for like 80 yards on us like he always yeah. done for yes. some reason. No. <laughs> you think Danny, you think Danny, Danny, Danny Daniel, Dines. Danny Daniel Jones is going to come out and put 35 on us right now? Somehow, yeah. I think, I don't know. I don't know why. I think, yeah. If I, I'm, if, if I can yeah. predict anything, I know a, a thousand percent Daniel Jones will have an eighty yard rush rushing touchdown against us. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. He's gonna fall he's gonna fall on the five. He's sure. gonna fall on the five. For sure. <laughs> All right. I I say we wrap it up on that high note. Um but we are the Philly Escape Podcast. We just launched. We just landed. Landed. It's still awkward. They're gonna get it down eventually. <laughs> but we'll 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 see you guys. I got next it that time. time. <laughs> Feeling twenty two. All right, see you guys.